Howdy, folks. Welcome back once again to that Deadgum Lawrence Jameson show. It's a Warhammer painting show. And lately I've been on this Nurgle kick and I'm going to continue on with it. And without a bunch of hullabaloo, I'm going to get straight into it from what the title of this video is. Is going to be painting this Glocken. Now, what I have done to prepare this Glocken, and here he is. Now, what I have done to him is I took and sprayed him down with a spray paint of Death Guard Green. And I've done the little fellers up on top of him, too. This one and the wizard. I did the same thing. I sprayed them down. And then, once that had been dried, I took and washed him with a phenylene camo shade. A phonian camo shade. So he just had one wash over like that. And that's been dried for several days, a week or two even, before I can get out get around to him. And so now... I decided I'm gonna go ahead and just do this live stream well because it's gonna be rather quick on the main base parts of this. You know, even though this is this is a green that I sprayed it with, is really not the green I'm going to end up with. This is kind of a base, and uh, I'm gonna modify it to be just a little bit different than my other greens that I'm gonna use as my medium green is gonna be this moot green, and it's really I don't know, it ain't neon, but it's kind of bright green. I'm going to start off with this here Strachan green. And it's just a little bit lighter than that regular Death Guard green. And that's going to change his color just a little bit. And I'm going to have about five different dry brushes, I reckon, or more that I'm going to be putting on this model. You know, they get quicker as they go on down, but about five different dry brushes I'm going to be putting on the model as a base coat. And then I'm going to wash the model over again after that to uh, get the uh, smooth out the brush strokes of the of the of all them dry brushes and all. So I'm going to get to it first. The first coat I'm going to be putting on it is going to be using a big, wide, flat brush like this. And, uh, because I'm not worrying about the details. I'm getting a, a base coat down, then I'm going to smooth out them brush strokes, and then all these little bubbles, and all these little tentacles, and all these little things, and horns, and all that stuff gets picked out of, a, of that base coat, and pop out of a darker base coat. So, I'm going to go ahead and get started with, I need to mix up my wet palette first. So, I'm going to do a wet palette, like I've done in these other couple videos lately. And show y'all how it's done, just how quickly it can be done. Now, all I got is a little foam tray, and I got a, several sheets of paper towels cut to fit in them. Now, I done spill some paint up in there. That's what this color and then it is. And, all. and so, you can use it over and over again, is what I'm trying to say about the paint being spilled in it, because I have used this one 15 times or more already. So, Pour a little water in it and wet the whole paper towel down. And then, if you're over a sink or whatnot, I'm over uh, a daggum waste basket, trash can. So I'm just going to pour it out. And if you pour it, you see it coming out in a stream. You want to wait till it dribbles. And once it dribbles, then you want to flip it upside down. Let it come down. It's dribbling. You know you got it. You want to not have a stream. You want to have a dribble. So that's wet enough. And then you take some of this parchment paper. And I reckon they use it for bacon and whatnot. But we use it for this. I can't find my scissors. So I hacked off a piece of it here. Can't find my scissors all right off off hand, so I'm gonna have to just tear me a, a slab of it off. And you lay it on right on top of that wet paper towel and smooth it out. 
you have to smooth it out because if you just lay it down there, it won't draw up the water yet into it and get itself wet and it'll curl up on you. So you got to smooth it out a little bit. It'll want to wrinkle up a little bit. But once it gets the water in it and it evens out with this paper towel, it'll stay wet. It'll stay flat. Now, it doesn't wet your paints, but what it does is just stops your paints from drying out. You gotta make sure you ain't got no bubbles in there. If you see, if you see a, a lighter, real light white spot in there, that means you got an air bubble down in there. So you want to rub them out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put this here, striking green down. Now I got an old paintbrush here that I'm going to use to rake out some of this striking green. And I'm hoping I can use it just straight out the pot without having to mix any black or anything like that. I'm going to give me a few good little dollops of it down there of that striking green. I also have me a paper towel folded up on hand that I'm going to use to wipe off most of my color when I do the dry brushing. Got my water pots, of course. I got this one water pot here for regular colors, and I got that over there for a metallics. And I use the same brushes back and forth on them. And I got some spare paper towels too that I'm going to use when I start wearing this and out because it does wear out a good bit. And by wearing out, it just means it gets too inundated with paint, and you got to throw it away between dry brushes. So, we'll go ahead and get some on this brush. And I get it about halfway up on the brush. Then I wipe most of it off. It's a dang damn shame it's as expensive as these are, these paints and all. But you gotta wipe about half of it off. Then where I start dragging on is I try to find the most roughest parts of the model. And that's the ones I drag on first. Because most, uh, the thing about dry brushing is this. A lot of paint's going to come off in the beginning, especially if you have too much paint on the brush. And as you, as you go, the paint and more paint comes off the brush, you have to apply more pressure to get the same result of it dragging across the highlights. You're dragging across the very highlights of it. Like I said, if you get too much on these flat spots, you can't rub them off here in the beginning. I got a little bit too much on there to start. But it's almost like driving a, a car up a hill. And you got to increase the amount of accelerator. And the hill's getting steeper is what I'm trying to say. You got to keep increasing the amount of accelerator with your foot down as the hill gets steeper. And it's just like this. As your more paint comes off the brush, you got to push more pressure down on the brush to get the same effect because you don't want to push it down hard in the beginning. You want to use it really, really lightly until it starts to wear off. And then when it starts to wear off, it's actually good. You don't want to automatically go back to get some more paint because when it starts to wear off and you're putting more pressure, that's when you can get really your best fades with this dry brushing between one color and the next, the color you, you're coloring over. Now, notice I ain't going to go all the way down to the tip of this thing because I'm going to change the color of the tip of that flailing tentacle. I'm going to change the color of it here in just a, a few minutes with some more dry brushing, of course, and, and then some washing to, to blend it all in. So, first of all, I am hitting this thing all over with that striking green over the top of a Death Guard green spray. And then a thinning camo shade wash to go down in the recesses as a base. And now I'm just dry brushing all over. Now, with this first coat, I'm a trying to establish a daggum color. You know, I'm a trying to establish an overall color on this model. In the dry brushes that come after this one, 
I'm not gonna be going up under it like this, up under his chin, 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 and up under his arm like I'm going right now. I'm going back to that striking green again because it just got to where it wasn't hardly nothing coming off at all. Once again, wipe some of it off. I can go back sometimes if you've got a, too much on the brush and you come off of it. You don't even need to go back to the palette yet. You, you just come back to the paper towel and it won't be dried all the way up. You can grab some more green. You can test it across a paper towel too and see how much you're letting off before you go back to the model. But like I said, with this first base coat, I'm changing. I'm wanting to change the color of the overall model. So I'm going everywhere. I'm going up in the butt cracks. I'm going all over, but I'm not going down in the recesses. That's the only place I ain't going. Other than that, I'm going all over the model. And everywhere but in the recesses. All dry brushes after this <clears throat> will be in like a zenthal, a zenithal, or whatever, you know, angle where light's coming down you know you won't be uh, i hate even i don't even know what you want to call that that up under there what i'm dry brushing now i don't want to put words to it but you, it's something up under there but on that, that this will be the last dry brush for that i'm just changing the color of that now and in fact i probably didn't even have to do that ain't nobody you know don't pick it up and look up under his butt crack. Some people I reckon. All right, I just about got that first dry brush done on him. Like I said, as it more comes off the brush, harder you got to push down. Get his face in there. Of course, a little bit later on, I'll come back in when I'm doing details. I'll give his face a little bit more attention and all. Some things I don't need to dry brush is up inside of that maw on that. That arm right here, I don't need to dry brush up in there because that's going to be a whole nother color up in there with different uh, colors and different washes up in there. Don't need to dry brush the horns. They're a detail part that I'm going to be painting a different color. Now, you could if you wanted, but I'm not, go I'm not going to. I'm just trying to get a base coat right now for his skin and bring it up to a different color than the Death Guard Green. All right, I'm just about done with that coat right there. Just about. Get that shoulder in there good. And I'm gonna go around and look. And like I said, once again, I'm not I'm not doing this very end too much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that to a different color. All right, now, once I got that base coat on, what I'm gonna do is now that moot green. This is gonna be my really my highlight base coat green. And it's kind of a brightish, it's got some yellow skin in it, but it's pretty bright. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to dollop out a few plops of it, but right next to that other green. Because my first dry brush right now ain't going to be just straight this moot green that I'm putting out. It's going to be just a, a mix right here. All right, now see how I'm coming in? And I'm dragging in some circles between the two of them and now I'm dragging over some of this darker green and I'm watching this other green to see I don't want to get I want to get maybe I'm trying to get halfway between some in color wise and I think I'm getting close right now I'm going to darken down that moot green for this first dry brush there we go and then the second one, I'm going to hit it with the straight moot green. Okay, I'm going to use the same brush that I used before. Except that I'm going to flip over this thing to a cleaner spot. This paper towel. Now I'm going to grab up that mixture that I had, same thing about halfway up on the brush. Then I'm going to wipe most of it off. Now this time I'm going to get even more off than I did the other one, but I still want to keep enough to be able to get to put it on the model. Now, like I said, with these ones here, I'm going to start trying to start my rougher spots. 
But I'm going to do all this dry brushing with the model. Even when I pick the model up, I'm still going to maintain that same angle of coming down on it. Like I'm never going to get up under there, up under his arm with this color. Never. Because this is where the light's shining down and hitting it. You know, and showing this color. Everything else where the, where the light was up under, the shatters are going to stay them other colors. And this is where it just showing where the green where a green hits him where it turns this color. This is his real color when a light hits him. And we get the back of that arm. It's already starting to look pretty good. This is like an incredible Hulk color to go for his head and face. His booby right there, belly. Like I said, I'm watch how I'm going down with the strokes with the brush, down with the stroke, down with the stroke. I'm never coming up stroking because I'm this is the light, you know, this is the high light. And I'm and not only are you touching the top portions of the model with this highlight, I gotta need to grab some more because it just quit quit on me. Not only are you touching the top portions of the model. You're simulating here how the light comes down on it because you have to, you know, of course, on miniatures, you have to exaggerate light and shadow on them because they're reduced. So you come in there and see how he's changing. I don't know if you can see it so good in the video, but he is changing color considerable. And I'm liking it. Back of his arm. Like I said, all my strokes are from top to bottom, top to bottom, like plucking on a guitar down strokes I mean I'm never coming up I'm not going back and forth I'm not I'm not poking in I'm not jabbing I'm not I'm down stroking just like the light would come in on it okay it's green you just barely touch his butt cheek in there look <laughs> at that green I'm getting a real, looks like a real nice move over here, color. Now that I'm here in the middle, this is where I got to switch gears real quick because I want uh, like a, a, a different color mixing into here. And I don't want to highlight all the way up and then try to mix my other color on top of it because I'm kind of going to show you how I mix in with dry brushings and all either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this in a green brush. I'm not even going to rinse it out because that's one thing too. Once you start dry brushing with a brush, you kind of want to finish it out. When you go to the water with it, you are going to, uh, yes, Clarence, I'm, I'm a rich baller, you know, and I, and I buy only the best. Only the best is good enough for me at Dagum Apple Barrel. I did a job in Norcross today, and I bet I was in a spitting. I know I was in spitting differences of the place it makes this thing. It makes all this Dagum stuff. I did a job there today. But anyway, here we go. Um, I'm going to switch to a different color paper towel or different paper towel for this color. Man. The two colors I'm going to use, I want a purple and a bluish and to a pinkish. So I'm going to get a purple, a blue, and a pink. And I got a, this is an old Citadel paint. It's called Hormagaunt, Hormagaunt, Hormagaunt Purple. I'm going to blab out a, a dwellop of that, but just one. That stuff is valuable to you. I just... Can't get that one more. I reckon they got the same color or something. This one's here. It's called Calador Sky. It's a blue. I'm going to drop out a blob of that right there right next to it. Yeah, it's Citadel or nothing. I will use some of them other ones. I'm just fooling. But I'm mainly a Citadel. Disciple. 
on the models and everything. Some emperor's children. Some interest, emperor's chillings. Paint. So, I wish I could put that paint next to that purple. But, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brush I'm going to use to dry brush with. And it's this one. It's about a half a size, or like about a quarter size of that big in it I had. But it's still got a flat end on it. And it's, you know, got a little bit of action to it. So, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to work on the very end with a straight pink. And I'm going to grab some of that pink. And I'm going to use it pretty heavy. Almost like I'm painting it. Almost like I'm painting, especially the very end is going to be a solid pink. And I got to go all the way around it with this. All right. And what I want to do is as I, as I start to get, once I get it covered completely in the pink here, I want to just run the pink out of the brush. Normally, if you would get to this stage, you would go back to the pink and get some more pink. If you're painting this all pink. But in right here, I don't I don't want to go back to the to the palette. I just want to run out in a dry brush now now i didn't change from a putting pink on to a dry brush now i want to take a lollop of that purple a big one and come over here to that pink and mix it in grab as much pink as you need to to, to tone that purple up Then get then get that off. And then come in and right where you was dry brushing that purp that pink, you come back in with that purple. Alright. And then yeah, that creates a kind of, of a fade. And especially since we're working fast and paints are still a little wet, you can get a good little blend going there. Alright, and you I just went up for about, you know, about an inch and a half with that color of purple right there. All right. Once again, you don't go back to the. If you got too much still left on there, just go ahead and wipe it off on the paper towel. You don't go back to the water with a dry brush. That's why they call it a dry. So you want to keep it dry. And you're fighting against these wet palettes too. They're keeping your paints nice and wet, but you know they ain't really you know the best for dry brushing. But now I'm going to the straight purple. Get it mostly off. And then I start working right where I left off with that other little purple. And I'm only going to work up about an inch right there. But I'm going to have to go all the way around. Is that going to claw or is it this tentacle here, this arm that's a tentacle? Work my way all the way around. I got to grab a little more because it run out and run completely out on me now some things like these little tentacles and horns and doodads is sticking out right here i ain't really worried about because there are details that i'm going to paint on it over or later i'm getting a base coat on the skin now wipe off everything mostly that i got i'm going to use the same brush now I take some of this blue and i run it in over there on that purple and i make me a mix it's kind of that blue and that purple. All right. I got that going. Makes me a dark, kind of a darker navy blue almost. Right. And then I'm going to go in the same spot right there. I got a little bit too much on. I might have to come back with a touch of that purple. And I'm going to run around again about this, but a little bit less, about a half inch up onto his arm. Right? And I'm fading it down. You know, and in this, I am scrubbing. We ain't doing uh, down strokes right now. I am scrubbing because I'm trying to get in all the skin area to get it and change it to that color. And then I fade it on top of that purple. It, it, it didn't come out too bad. I ain't got to go back to the purple. Now, what I do need to go to now is the straight blue. And I got a little room over here on the corner. Get everything off there. I'm going to straight blue. 
And this time I'm only going to go up about a quarter. And I'm really going to dry brush this one on completely. This, this is just a fade out of the blue that I already got on there basically to the green is what this one is. Fading that blue out onto that green. And then the highlights of the green will overlap this. This blue, this final blue that I got going up against that green and fading. You see, I am going back and forth, back and forth very quickly on the fade on that arm. Yeah, Clarence, don't make me come down there because I am uh, May, the first weekend in May, whatever that is. I am coming down there for Clarence. So I'm sure you're going to want to get a 40K game going down there. You know, if you can take off time from them daggone casinos to uh, get a daggone game in. While I'm down there, because I can't stay, but uh, just a little bit down there. All right, now I done changed through dry brushing from a pink to a lighter purple to a darker purple to a do a darker blue to a lighter blue to all the way up back onto my green. Okay, now I'm done right now with this uh, this brush from these blue colors. So now I can't go and wash it out. Another thing I try to avoid too when I'm doing like this extensive dry brushing, I don't want to wet my paper towels too much from going from the water to these paper towels. So I either just just clean out a brush in one little spot right there to get everything out. I don't go all over the whole thing because I don't want a wet paper towel. It is dry brushing again. So this paper towel is about done. So I'm going to get another, fold it up. Because you want a few layers of thickness in the paper towels to soak up the moisture out of the Dagon paint. So this brush can sit to the side. And I'm going to do maybe one more of these. I am going to do one more of these big with the big brush with the straight moot green. All right, I'm going with straight moot green. Starting again up on top, where it's the roughest, the roughest spot on his skin. That's where I'm starting because that's where it's going to pull off most of the uh, that color and get you down. So a nice, good, workable consistency and amount of on the brush. Now. I'm going to switch back to my raking mode where I'm just down stroking and I'm just coming from above. There I'm dead from above. All right, I'm going to grab a little bit more because I've run out. Get it off and I'm using straight moot green this time. Once again, Doing my downward strokes. Let me get over here around that deck. Going flab back, flat fat back. He's got flab hanging over his deck. Going belt done. That's a called a done lap around here. But anyway, we got lots of people with done laps. When I get down here over near the arm, of course I got leaning back. That's where I got to be a delicate. On my stroke, still keeping a down stroke, but I'm going back over that blue. There's going to be spots where I'm pulling a highlight of that moot green over where I had that blue, and that's where the blend is. And it's a done deal now. It's done. It was that dang on quick, like a doctor sticking a needle in, in some, you know, how they do it. Look, I'm going to count to three one, two, and it's in. You know, they get you. But I'm down stroking again. I got one more little grab of this moot green. And I'm going to take care of his back. 
And it don't matter if I get some raked on to his, uh, uh, what is that thing? A butt, uh, cup, butt cover? It, just a rag that he done, somebody stapled to him, covered the deep for his decency. And <laughs> but, uh, so once again, I'm just, I'm coming down like the light will come. If you'll notice way up under, under, under that undergut, it don't get none of this green. And on the inside of the legs, it don't get none of the greens. And I'm not flipping the model upside down. If you look on the underside of his arm, it's still the same color as the base color ever was. And it's up under his chin, up under that boob, uh, and the undergut, everywhere. So I've just about raked up all that mood green that was on my palette. And I just got a couple more spots I need to hit with that mood green. Right up front here on his knee. And his leg in here. All right, I got that done. And he's starting to look, you know, a little bit, a little bit better, a little bit more defining on him, on his stuff. So now I need to put down another little palette. Need to move this one over. Because I run out of moot green, and now you need to add a considerable amount of yellow. Them. So, lay me out another slab, a little parchment paper on top of my wet paper towels. Now, these wet paper towels and me, I got the heat blasting in this house because we're still a little bit in the cold. So, it's dry in this house. This this thing will dry out on me in three or four hours, maybe a little bit, a little, little bit long. I mean, you might get six hours out of this path. In some places with humidity, and if I was to open my windows and all during the summertime, I'd get a long time on one of these. And if you put them in the refrigerator, you'll get even longer. Yeah, it seems to preserve it and cover it. But sometimes that will put it up in a refrigerator. So I need another dollop of moot green. Then I'm going to blast out here. Let's put a one and a half. And I roll it off to get most all of it off of there so I can just clean out. And I'm going to use my water clean out over here on this paper towel. So I don't get my one that I'm raking off on. And I still got this green brush. Now I'm going to need a little yellow. But I'm going to really start, I think. With a little adding of Avalanche Sunset. I ain't going to the straight yellow just yet. Since I'm doing so many uh, highlight or what you want to call it. Because this is a $400 model. You know, I'm kidding. It's 400 It's 400 and something. 420 tell you. It's 420 points in the game of Age of Sigmar. And that's a considerable uh, amount of your points and all. In any force. So he's a lot of points and he's a good amount of dollars. I got him online, this particular model, uh, from some desperados and, and got it a little bit less than you would pay if you were to roll up in a games workshop store. And I believe in a games workshop store, he's at least 110. I might be mistaken. He might be just around there, 110, $115. So Avalanche Sunset's what I'm going to get and use. To drop, and I'm only gonna drop like one wallet of that because I'm then I'm gonna go to a straight yellow. Now, once again, I'm still gonna use the big brush. I might use the big brush throughout since I'm having pretty good good results with it. I was gonna switch down to a smaller brush, that other smaller brush, but I'm liking the results. And when it starts to get to where I feel like I'm not getting down enough detail with these dry brushes, and I know that sounds funny about detail and dry brushes talking together in the same sentence. But when I feel like I'm not get, being able to get down into good cracks and I'm over over highlighting, maybe because the brush might be too big, I might switch down to another brush. But let me get this going. I'm mixing that whole amount of Avalanche Sunset with that green right there, and seeing what I come up with. Uh, some kind of ugly. It's a pea green. Now, I didn't need a whole lot because I ain't going to have to come back to this maybe once. I might have to be, even be able to come back 
to that palette because I got so little paint there. So I got kind of a pea green. And I want to kill my moot green now completely down. So I got to get lots of this off there. Because this is just a highlight to transition me into them yellows that I'm going to use as my true highlights. This is my transition. So I got to get most of that off and I work it all off. I just see the I see the dollars just going away, man. I'm just dragging them to dollars away. But anyway, here you go. Yeah, it's a technique. You gotta get you gotta sacrifice for your art. So we're gonna start back up on top again. Now with the dry brush in a different color, of course. You got to look and see, is it even making an effect? It's not. I need more. I didn't drug too much off there in my, in my fanaticism. There it goes. There it goes. Now, I'm going real light. I won't kill my moot green. I'm going real light. And it's going to be quick. I'm still doing my downstrokes. And this is where the light will hit the model, just as if you were spraying a Zenthal highlight. I'm going to have to go back to it one more time. I screwed up on that first pass when I raked too much off of it. Like I said, this is just my transition color between my mood green and my high yellow highlights. Now, when I come down to that arm again, I need to be a little careful. And rake just barely over the top of that daggum blue with this highlight. This is the first of my highlights. Now, I need to add straight yellow. Ow. I'm going to go with two dwellops of yellow. Maybe two and a half. The reason I've done the yellow first, and get, I spin it to get most of it off. Because I didn't want to maybe even have, have to get no daggum yellow in my green in my yellow. Try to keep my yellow a little bit more pure. So I need to add a little drop of moot green over on the side right there. Because I don't want pure yellow just yet. Now I am switching gears now to a, a lower size brush. Smaller brush because I need a little bit more detail control. I make sure this one's dry. That one I had wet it out and cleaned out earlier. The one I was doing all the blues and purples with. Same brush. I'm just making sure it's dry. Okay, I'm going over here to my palette. You can see that green and that yellow right there. I'm going to mix them together. I'm going to drag some of the green into the yellow. Hey, gentlemen. Here we go. Be all right. I want to be able to go to a pure yellow pretty quick in another couple of drags. I want to go pure yellow, but that's a nice high green right there. That's a P. That's an early spring P right there. That's a good color. Why did I have to do that? After all that talk about not going to the water. All right, so I'm going to get rid of that brush actually because I got another another dip. It's just a little bit shorter hair stand up light. Lord of Blights. He become a useful character, I'm gonna tell you. Listen here. Lord of Blights. He's the one on the cover. Uh that gum Nurgle uh Maggot Kim book, as you know. It's a model everybody's done fell in love with, even though he's a disgusting fat slob, you know what I'm saying? So everybody's in love with him. He he does a little bit of work on the table, man. And if he hits with his own head that he throws, his single head that he throws, not the ones he gives off to the Black Kings. It's a negative three rend on it. So that's a negative three AP for 40K people clearance. So it's a very good, it's like a lace cannon, but you know, it's only doing negative three damage or die three damage, I believe. All right. So I'm going to go now with this smaller brush and grab that pea color. Take most of it off. 
start testing up here with a real light drag on the most. There we go. On some of the most. Now that could, that's actually going to be brown later on. That that uh, hairy looking stuff is is actually going to be a brown, I believe. I may. I don't know. Let's see, it's supposed to be a brown. It's almost like a growth or something. I don't know. I might make it. Who knows? It comes out this good of a green. Now this green, of course, is a highlight, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm going straight down. Going down. I leave the moot green on the flat top of his head. I'm not even concentrating. Now I'm actually starting to look for the high points of the model. Go back and get me a little more. I'm looking for the high points. The little, the prick, the things that's sticking out. Now, of course, these boobos, bubbles and stuff, and goiters and stuff, that's going to be painted in, in details. But you can use them to test out how much is coming off the brush for you before you get to the flat spots like the back of these arms like I'm working on right now is pretty critical. You know, that you have a good, the right amount on the brush when you're working them. I know it looks like I'm scrubbing, but I ain't. I'm coming, I'm going up and down. Go back again, grab me some more of that real light pea green. And I'm rotating the model around working as because I'm not painting it just from one direction I'm painting it as because from wherever direction you're going to be able to see in it would be like that would be the way the sun was coming down now making sure that I got the right amount of juice on my brush when I hit the back of that calf because I don't want it that's where I want my best feathering is on the flatter bigger spots that's showing off on the model that's where I want my best feathering. Like these fat rolls, the way these fat rolls is going around and catching. I'm going down, 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 down. All right, I think I need one more and we're about done with that color. Most of it off, that fat roll, gotta watch out. You put just a little bit too much on there, sometimes you can go back and catch it with your finger. But you ain't, you dry brushing, so you ain't, man, you ain't got but a second. To do that or it's done and most times you can't do it once again i'm just coming down 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 once again even though i've got the model flipped over like this i'm not doing anything about up underneath that arm up underneath the legs up underneath the butt and the guts and all that i'm coming as the way the light will come down here we go now i'm just about all the way around the model I said five dry brushes, I was lying. It's going to be a lot more than that. But I'm the daggum dry brush Okay, So here we go. I'm going to fold out my, my paper towel. And get down to the nitty gritty. Flip it over where I can get a, a better blank spot on it. Now I'm going to grab a little bit more yellow. And grab just a little bit of that green. So now I'm basically into a yellow color as you can see right there that's what i'm into i'm into a darkish yellow but it ain't Averland. it's brighter so because it's more pea like and i don't seen babies puke this color and poop it too that's for dang i'm sure i'll poop this color at times but that's about now baby poop color is a highlight here that we want to just drag on like and this is where we're really going to start paying attention to where the high points are on the model. And we're not going to be hitting this on points that ain't the high points on the model. Working it through there, that shoulder. Oh, that's a nice fade. You can see it when you get it right. You'll know when it's right. Working my way down over top of his daggum head. On top of that daggum face. Side of that maw. Top of the maw, the maw arm, I mean, lamprey maw, I think they call it, after the fish, I reckon, or the eel thing. I reckon they get the, you, you got a lot of them over in England, it's full of them. Not over here. 
but coming down toward that blue again, I gotta be real careful. Make sure I get the side of that belly while I got him flipped back here and I can see what the heck I'm doing with the light down hitting right. Now I need to grab some more of this light yellow. I don't know how long we've been running, folks. I'm just going to keep on going, you know, because I'm a going to dry brush this thing until he's over highlighted so that I can wash on top of it a diluted wash to bring the brush strokes out of it, take them away, any of them, and smooth and transition all the highlights. Although I'm getting a pretty good results, it's always easier dry brushing on bigger models and a model like this with this many pricklies and this much detail. Uh, it's easy, folks. This model is easy. I'm not saying, oh, beginners just come and do this, but it's for, for a you know a good decent uh, painter experienced painter i should say this uh this model is uh, fairly easy so far while well, well, now i'm now it's gonna fall apart on me i'm running my daggum gums by how easy it is oh it's easy now oh please nurgle grandpappy don't uh don't punish me for my bragging all right starting to look good i'm going to need another delilah of a straight yellow and i can put it right back down on top of that other yellow i'm gonna get me two i need to wipe off a little bit i saw a green spot up in my yellow that gum chocolate in my peanut butter although some people know me. I'm the Reese King. I'm the King of Egg. I'm Reese. I'm a King of Coca Cola too. So I want to say cheers. Good day, Redwell. How's it going? Thanks for coming. <sighs> Ain't nothing like Coca Cola. Made right here. In Atlanta, GA. So, going back to my straight yellow now. Now, of course, some of my green is going to get mixed into it because I didn't wash my brush. Off. It's not a straight, straight yellow, but it's pretty daggum close right now. It get, it's a little contaminated with the green, but that's totally fine. I flipped over again. I'm taking mostly all this and off. Now, starting on top again. Finding where my high, high highs are and taking them with the yellow. And that's the edges and broken off horns, even though some of them might get painted over later on under details. You can use that to judge how much paint you got coming off the brush. It's a good test piece. A lot of times, it, God dang it. Maybe I got it quick enough. That's another thing I didn't tell you. I'll go to the daggone spit. So I went straight to licking my finger and going on top of it when I got a, a bad spot right there just hit. If this yellow is pretty strong right now, you are I'm able to really tell where I'm hitting with this straight yellow. And I'm only touching the top highlights, of course. And using those boils as a guide, even though they're going to be painted over later on. Using them as a guide to how much paint I still got on my brush. All right. Gut right there. Looking good. I'm getting a real good fade effect too. But I know it's a lot of dry brushing. I know it's a lot of mixing and a lot of different colors. But if this is the centerpiece of my whole daggum army. For real. I got great unclean ones. Holy all right, I may, I got it. Um, I got a great unclean one. But this fella here, he is, 
he's the most expensive you know, that you can get a regular you know a regular nurgle right brainers for us he really is the most powerful man the daggum his command ability of course is grandfather's something <laughs> but anyway what his command ability basically does is in a 21 inch radius i believe or 14 one of them two i'm so uninformed right now but anyway in one of them radiuses he gives a plus one attacks to all keyword nurgles which is your whole that blame army so everybody's getting a plus one to attack to their attacks profile on all of their melee weapons so that can be pretty considerable when everybody's all stuck in and that's the one thing that i figured out about my nurgle force a lot of my other armies i used to get i get teed off and frustrated and all when an opponent uh, starts to win and I, i'm losing on turn one and two but with this nerve army let me tell you don't worry don't worry grandfather <laughs> grandfather will protect and i have had a lot of armies hit me lately with everything they got on turn one and two and i've absorbed it and by the luck of granddaddy nurgle and i gotta change tampons i mean uh envelopes right now real quick the uh by the luck of granddaddy nurgle i had the last couple games i have played i have doubled the turn from two to three meaning i got the bottom of turn two as my turn and then i got the top of turn three as my turn and by turn three Dagum, all of my stuff is stuck in in close combat. All my spells and abilities is in range of everything because I got some pretty wicked spells and whatnot that's only got seven inch range and three inch range even. But by turn three, all that stuff has come into play. And if I then double jump off of a turn two into a turn three like that, man, it just rots the army away. All of a sudden, on the bottom of turn two, they get hit pretty hard, and they're like, holy, what in the holy was that? And then you win the daggum roll by the graces of granddaddy. Nurgle, you, rent, you win the roll for the top of turn three and roll off even more magic and damage on them maybe. And it's it's dang over, man. They I have rolled up a couple, of, it, but I'm 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 talking trash too. I haven't really rolled up, but just a couple. I'm I'm seven and two. I know I said on the internet I was eight and one, but I'm seven and two with this army basically. I played a couple of team matches and things too that I, that I have lost and team matches that I've won, but straight up head to head, I'm seven and two. In a I haven't blown nobody out, but maybe one time. And I haven't been blowed out, but maybe one time. And you can rack that up, you know, certainly uh, somewhat to dice rolls on either side, you know, of either side of a blow like that. I'm going to grab me a little bit more yeller. I'm just about to run out down there. And I'm going to shake up some white. And if you'll notice, I don't use I a lot clearance. Clarence highly recommends this stuff here. And this apple barrel that you get down at Dagum Dollar Stores or Walmart or whatnot. And it, it's good paint, man. For black and white, man, I use it. I used to use only this. I've painted whole up miniatures when I first was getting into this, back into it at times. There was nothing but this. But it's good stuff. So I'm going to lay out some white, maybe too much, to get with that yellow. And I want a real high, high yellow for this. It can even have a touch, touch, touch of that green, and I don't care. I would like it, actually. And it does. So I get sunshine yellow going. And I'm going to have to drag off way most of this sunshine yellow before I put it up on that clock. This can only be on the very very highlights of it 
and I've almost used up a whole side of this daggum paper towel getting this off of there. Oh, the dollars that I that I dry brush into a paper towel for my love of dry brushing. But anyway, I'm gonna start up on top here. I'm gonna hit it. I don't know. I took too much off. I can't even see nothing. So let's see what I got now. Once again, I'm just coming down from the top, checking it on some of them boo-boos, boo-boos, however you call it. Now the very edge, the very top highlights of this model is the only thing that's going to get this light yellow, sunshine yellow. And I'm only going to really put it on spots that I've already hit. I'm going to go around the model. It's not going to be hard because only spots that's already been hit with a high, high yellow is even going to get this color to even come down on top of them because my green is pretty much it is set i'm just highlighting yellow in high 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 spots now oh my goodness i think i didn't like that calf i didn't like the way it was coming there we go that's a lot better i was able to lick my finger and come off like I said, I'm not even, if you look at the back of his arm and the underside of his arm right here, it's still green. There's no yellow on it at all. And if you're rolling back, you'll see how much yellow I didn't put up onto the top. So, all right. Now I've got one final highlight I'm going to put to this model. And it's going to be even more white. With just a little yellow and it's almost going to be a what color is that uh almost like a certain people paint their kitchens and in, in something man it's just a really really bright bright yellow whitish yellow and i got to get most of my stuff off most of my paint off Now I'm going to hit the only the high spots that I've already hit with the yellow. This is only this is my final touch. Final touch. Oh, I'm sorry, it ain't my final touch. This is my second. This is my second. Oh. Was able to get it. I was able to get it mainly. Got to watch it. Um, I got one more. This gonna be a straight white. I'm sorry. One more. That's a straight white. And now I'm just raking over the spot, the cut, the spots that was yellow before. It was my high, highest yellow. Touching, touching, touching. Done. Now, now, I do have to go to the water because. There's no way I'm going to get straight white without getting bitter out. All I'm going to do that is go to the water. Now I'm going to switch over to this other paintbrush, another paintbrush that's completely dry. And I'm going to put out a blollop of white over here on a dry palette over here to the side. Y'all can see it's right there. I put out a blop of white on the dry pad. And I'm going to pick a very clean spot and I'm going to get straight white on that brush that I haven't even used yet today. And I'm going to get most of all that white off. I'm going to make sure that brush ain't wet. But I... All that white. Off, off, off. To where I'm just barely. I'm testing it on the stain desk even, you know, to see how much I got. I want most, of, I got to get it all off of there because this will screw you up. This is the final countdown. All right, here we go. On the highest, highest yellow parts, I touch it with that white. That straight up white, straight. It's just on the high. Highest, top of that kneecap, tips of them edges to going to them toes, eyebrows, 
edge of that, edge of that, edge of that. There's some big fat roll right there. Gets a touch of it up on top. Shoulder. I don't think I got that shoulder too much. I think, but I think my voice is gonna bring it back down. Look at that white. We just about done dry brushing, folks. I promise you. Okay, there we go. Touching that, touching that white just over where that yellow was. Very, very, very lightly. Like a butterfly's kiss. There we go. Done deal. Let's highlight it all the way up. Now, what I'm going to do is I got to let it sit and dry for a minute. Before I put a wash straight to it, I'm going to have to let it sit and dry. But that's going to give you and I an opportunity to speak about this Nurgle force over here that I have running. And we can talk a little bit about Nurgle because he only needs just a few minutes. He only needs just a few minutes to dry. And so we can take a look at this Nurgle force that I got to run over here that I've been running in a couple of leagues and how much I done got painted on it and whatnot. And we can talk about some of the units in it just for a few minutes while he dries up. Let me re-rig this daggum camera. Oh, there we go. We can also talk about this new box I done bought. Because I did buy a new box of to carry in case. I mean, is what I bought. All right, give me just a second, folks, and get the dang old camera set a little bit better. What we can talk about this dang old nerd. There we go. All right. Let me wash out this brush real quick. We're done with dry brushing for a little bit. My battery's running low, huh? Well, hang on. All right, folks, just give me just one second, and let me plug this battery into this daggum computer, and I'm going to get started telling y'all about this Nurgle Force that I got going. All right, folks, hold your horses for just a minute. I got to run and I grab me a Coca Cola. And I, I would advise that y'all do the same thing go run and grab a Coca Cola. And uh, I will be right back. Let me throw the stack of glocking on the board as well. Maybe y'all get a little bit better look at what the color of the yellow that I put on. Let me see if I can do it within the light here, if, if it'll look a little, if you can see a little bit better of how much yellow that I have put on this Glock. Can. All right, let me go grab me a Coca-Cola. I got this thing plugged in, and we're going to get started on just a second segment of this while we letting that Glock can dry for just about 10 minutes. Cause I need to let them all them uh dry brushes I done did on top of them dry completely until I, before I put a wash on it because I don't want to uh, wash them away because it it will it will dilute them too much and wash them away so just hang on just one second. Bro. Thank 
See this stick? Yeah, I reckon. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah, Coca Cola. And this ain't a bad idea neither. A couple of Reese eggs. All right, here's the Nurgle Force that I have. Dog, you better be quiet now. This is a Nurgle Force that I got. And how it's done started out was I had these five Black Kings right here from the Hammer Hall set from a silver tire. And I just had them. And then one day down at the store, I picked up this Lord of Plagues. And this is a couple. This is like back in October and all. So I had that set right there. Then this new Nurgle thing dropped. And I bought into it pretty good. Got that great unclean one. Got me a Glocken. Of course, you've seen me working on, of course. Got me a Maggot Lord. Bought the Daggum Blight War set. To get these uh, plague drones, to get her articulous slime mucks right there, to get them daggum nurglings, and to get these plague bears right here. That's what come in that box. Then one day I had a wild hair and th thought that I needed a daggum sloppity bile piper that I might, was going to use to buff a great unclean one. Plus one, uh, re-roll ones, I mean. I thought that's what I was going to do. But there ain't no daggone way I'm doing that. Maybe in fluff game or something, but not competitive game. No no daggone way. But anyway, so anyway, I had bought one tree. Then I bought another tree. Then I bought another tree. I don't know if I'm going to buy another tree. <laughs> because I don't see myself putting out a fourth tree that's in any kind of strategic way that's even helpful to me there may be games where it will come into play where you could put a fourth tree out because i haven't run myself out of three and just said well i just don't need to put it i just quit keeping track of contagion points because i got all my daggum trees oh lord that's a whole mess of nurgle thank you andy <laughs> oh mess it is a daggum mess it messed up my daggum wallet pretty good too but not too bad. You know, I, I caught some sales. I got that Blight War. You know, it's a daggone bargain. Uh, you know, I got this one online on the cheap. You know, I did get some bargains on it and all. But, yeah, it's, it's you know, you, you, anyway, it is a mess of them, I reckon. But I don't think I'm going to get another fourth tree. Uh, I don't know what else I'm really even going to get. You know what I mean? I got that Lord of Blights. And here's how I've been running my 2,000 point force. Of course, I got a Glockin. Great unclean one. And usually he's my general if I'm running. Uh, he's my general if I'm running a demon type list where I'm going to be. I got two type lists is what I got. For 2,000 points, I got two type lists. I got one type. That's where I'm wanting to fight against, let's say, uh, uh, people that got a lot of mortal wound attacks and things like that, like death, and people that do a lot of stuff on sixes and stuff, like seraphons and things like that. What I want to play against them, I want to do a, 
a two hit debuff list where I'm trying to de debuff their two hit list, two hits to bring them off their special abilities. And I'm trying to buff my number of attacks. And what I do by doing that is I make that bag um jet great unclean one my general. And he uses his grandfather's joy command ability to give him suckers plus one attacks. Then we make sure a daggum demon hero, it mostly has to be him, is within seven inches of these suckers. And that gives them another plus one to attacks. And then we use a daggum right bringer sorcerer to hit them with blades of putrefaction, which gives mortal wounds on a six plus. So that basically, I believe it's around 45 attacks total. And, you know, you're going to get four on the average mortal wounds off the rip. Plus, you're going to make people save a whole bunch because most of them attacks is on threes and four, things, things of that nature. You're going to, on average, make people rolling about 20 daggum dice in a, or in that neighborhood, plus the four mortal wounds. It, it can You can jump on somebody with it. But I use that list, and it's got, uh, of course, Three sets of rock bringers. Does it have three? Of black kings. I'm sorry. It has two sets of black kings and one set of plague bears. Um, because it's my demon list. And it's a little bit weaker, but I'm just trying to buff. You know, I'm trying to uh, debuff the enemy more than buff myself. And my my better list that I like better, I guess, is where I use the Glockin as the general. And I give him a spell, Cloyan Quagmire which is a very good spell Nurgle has that attacks against the saving throw of the enemy. The better saving throw the enemy has, the easier it is to put die six mortal wounds on them. Because all you got to do is beat their daggum or tie what their saving throw is. So against Stormcast, that is strong. You know, against, against uh Death and, and things that's saving on fives and sixes, it's not so so damn strong. But as he got coin clagmire, and this is the one that attacks the save debuff and my ren buff. It's gonna be things that are gonna be buffing my ren and things like that. Now my great unclean one's in the same list as well, and he's got the same artifact that he had in the list before, which is uh endless gift. Now, what endless gift gives you is at the end of the battle shock phase he takes and rolls the number of dice he done took wounds for that turn and on a four better he gets them back so basically he's going to save 50 percent if he survives of course he'll save back on average 50 percent of the wounds that he takes the turn every turn and then come his hero phase he gets die three more just back off the rip Plus, he can get die three more off the wheel if the wheel doesn't come to that stage. So you can heal him back up pretty daggum quick, um, especially if he, he hadn't took a bunch of wounds. But on a fact, he really wants to take some wounds. I fought him just the other day against a daggum mighty lord of corn. And you know that daggum axe is dangerous. You know, it can kill something like this just outright. But what happened was this. That daggum axe put seven wounds on me. But I got to roll. His disgusting resilient save is called Blubber and Bile. And it is, if you roll a five or six, it saves the wound back, of course, just like Discouraged this and Resilient. But on a six, the enemy takes daggum wound, mortal wound back. And I actually killed a mighty lord of corn. On blowback off of wounds, he he uh hit me with. I rolled a few sixes, man. He was blown. He was blown out. He's already a little bit wounded, but I I rolled a few sixes on on them seven saves, and he was dead. So I, he was. I was real happy with him, man. And of course, I got him outfitted for full close combat. Now I know everybody hollering about the bell and plus three movement. And I know all about it, but I'm going to get me another great and clean one experiment with that. I'm the dummy who rushed into it and didn't magnetize, even though I got a lot of other models and stuff is magnetized. I'm the dummy <clears throat> that rushed into it 
on daggum New Year's Eve or whatnot, whatever it was, that I put this mall together uh, on the internet, on a live show or whatnot. I rushed into it and glued him all together. Now I could take a daggum scaffold to him and a saw and chop him up and put him back down. But because I do believe that the bell is very, very useful because it gives plus three movement to everybody within seven inches of me. And that's very, very strong. You can use the tree's catapult ability with that. And if the wheel's in the right daggum place, you can blast units that are supposedly supposed to be slow, i.e. Black Kings. You can blast them across the board and jump on people with them. So he's very useful for me as even my general and my not my general. Now, <clears throat> the spell I keep with him most of the time, of course, he has his regular spells and stuff and, and, and the normal spells. But the spell I picked for him from the lore is Favored Poxes. And it's a daggum 21-inch spell that, that you can shoot at people out of, even at the, you know, you can blast it for people that's out of range of being uh, unbound a lot of times. You can blast it on a unit and they get negative one to hit and negative one to wound, negative one to save and all. And uh, it hurts them pretty pretty bad. And that favorite box is a pretty strong spell. And I believe it stays on them until I move. You know, I believe. I, I usually am moving around by that point. Um, but I like favorite boxes. I run this sorcerer here with a blade of putrefaction, like I was talking about before. And he can throw it on them. He can throw it on Blight Kings, which is eh, useful. But it's mainly useful to throw it on units as having a lot of attacks and all. But of course, when he's the general, he's buffing everybody to plus one attacks. These black kings got four attacks each. You throw blades of future faction on them. By, you know, that's 20-something attacks right there with blades of future faction. You're looking at three mortal wounds on the average just from that right there. So what else I'm, I'm liking? Of course, I talked to you about my daggum plague drones and how, how I was liking to use them. And I use a blight cyst when I'm using 2,000 points. A blight cyst is a war scroll battalion that basically gives everybody a daggum uh, plus one, a negative one rend to their weapons. The whole, everybody that's in the blight cyst, which is going to be all three of these blight kings and this fella here. Negative one rend. Now, everybody knows, man, by now, should know that how nasty these daggum Black Kings are. They're an elite heavy infantry unit that puts out a lot of daggum dice. And, the, and you know what happens, what they do is this. Each one of them suckers rolls three dice for their attacks. And when you roll a six, that six becomes number of attacks. So you can roll up a mess of attacks. Just one feller is a capable of a very large number of attacks. You know, 18, I reckon, is the number of attacks that he's really capable of. If you rolled all sixes and all, and then sixes again, or whatever, whatever. If you rolled all sixes on the sixes and the sixes again, it'd be 18. 18 hits is what they're capable of each man. So you're getting a lot of hits from them. But the draw, some of the drawback is when you is a lot of times when I'm hitting people with them, they ask me, Ren, no Ren? And I'm like, they're surprised that there ain't no Ren on them. You know, and I imagine for Ren, if you had negative one Ren built into them daggum Black Kings, you would have to run them. You'd have to run them up to 200 points, I believe, for, per five man squad because they would be OP. And But when you use this Plague Cyst War Scroll Battalion, to knock them all to negative one rend. And his self, of course. And the sorcerer who's thrown in there with him. Knock them all to negative one rend, man. It's a, It can be powerful and, and really put a lot of damage on it. So, if you'll notice, I didn't include Horticulus. The Magath Lord. Now, I have... In this other list here, that demon list that I was talking about, I have Bloab slotted in there. And Bloab is a Ma is a Magath Lord who's a sorcerer. And I don't have Bloab yet, and because Magath Lords is out of stock at this moment, actually everywhere. But I have Morbidex. And when I bought this model, I built him as Morbidex because I just like the way Morbidex look. And I just like the lore around Morbidex as well. 
and I had some kind of daggone fantasies about gonna run a bunch of nerglings. And I read the rules and said, I'm gonna run a horde of nerglings. And look how I can replace them. And look how I can uh and look how nerglings is out of stock everywhere. So that kind of fell by the wayside. And then I started building my army around mortal Nurgle uh Black Kings basically as my battle line and my whole you know core of my force and all. But what I've done over here is this. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, I usually run an ally over here with 2,000 point force. I got 80 points left over. Now, the ally I run is either this fella here, the Dark Oath Chieftain, or if I'm playing Malign Importance, I run his daggum girlfriend or his sister or whatever, whatnot you want to call it, the Dark Oath War Queen, and I run all her powers and put a daggum hurting. You know, with her powers coupled with the regular malign importance, I'll run that. Or I'll run, I got 80 points. I can run a core graph with these suckers right here. Did you throw in somebody's face as eight wounds or just an uncontrollable beast that I just throw out in front of people and just as a blocker or just nasty for a turn or two? You know, because it takes something significant to take, take them out in one turn. You know, so that daggum core graph is useful if you want to use it with that. But I'm back to over here. I got Horticulous Slime Ups. I got this Magath Lord. And I got these three Nerglings. And I coupled him over here and put him right there in this special league that is a Malign Portance League down at my local games workshop that's starting at 700 points. And it's going 100 points per week. It's going to play all the Malign Portance. It's to help people get into it too. You know, there's buying, dagging them, uh, start collecting boxes and whatnot. So I got into that league is 700 points and there ain't no battle line restrictions in that. that you know, you can have which, whatever you want, which I ain't trying to cheese up too bad, but I just, they, they, these are the models I ain't using in my regular Nurgle force. So I want to use them in something, you know? So and if I could slide this sucker in, I would, and I will, I will put him in probably this, this uh, sloppity bow popper. I'll throw him in once we get a couple few uh, rounds down in it. I ain't trying to put none of these suckers in it and over dominate the league or whatnot. I want to play and have fun. But what I've done was this. I am going to have, like I said, once again, his sister or lover, the Dark Oath War Queen, going to have her down there for any Malign Portance games. And I then structured this little 700 point force that we're in the hero phase. It's going to be nasty. For other people, that is. It's in the hero phase. Look at all this. That's everything I can do and will do. Just that right there is in one turn of prophecy points. Because you're going to generate an average of 10 prophecy points each turn. And each of one of these little abilities costs points to use. Just like command points in a, in a um, Warhammer 40k. And so you're generating these prophecy points. You gotta lose them or use them or lose them. So I done got this wrote up of how this girl, well, you know, he her is going to really blow up by changing over to the red mist, of course, and using some of her own stuff and just dumping mortal wounds on people in them for in them hero phases. Then I roll over to this. This is all the stuff I'm going to be doing with Articulus, Morbidex, and all the spells that's going to be cast by that Sorcerer because I got him a Mudder Grub, which allows him to cast two spells per turn. And I made him a Daggum General. And give him the Mudder Grub, Bloated with Corruption, which is a spell-like power, and the Plague Squall spell, which is another Mortal Wounds dumper. So they were just going to just roll, dump more wounds on them once we get into range, of course, everything in good time. Once we dump all these mortal wounds on them, then, of course, him bringing back his little nurgling set, another couple hundred points down the road, I'm going to have to get me a couple, uh, some sets of these nurglings, some more for him. I'll have her powers. I feel it's a pretty strong, you know, 
700 700.4 700 and especially using the stuff that I don't use now that we done look at my whole Nurgle Force, and y'all know all about it now, and even my three trees, my three feculent marl moths. I just want to say one more thing about that. The first feculent marl moth you lay down in a game, there's only one restriction on it, and that is that you have to place it looking for my Coca Cola, folks. The only restriction you have on turn one or before you before anybody picks sides, of course, is when you gotta lay this down. All restrictions you got is you gotta place it one inch from any terrain feature. But any other than that, you can place it anywhere on the board. You can place it right up against the dead gum objective or whatever, because of course the scenario has already been chosen and you know where the objectives are. And you can drop this right on top of it, right beside it, whatnot. Wherever you want, you can put it on what you your side you think you're gonna get. If you think got low drops, you're gonna get the fucking you're gonna get the first turn. You can put it where you can put it where you want to force the enemies in the enemy's deployment zone. And if you got low drops and you're gonna get the first turn, you think you're gonna you're gonna go and pick and all. So anyway, but uh, you can the main thing is you want to put it in the middle of the board and try to use it as a catapult. But the next one now. On turn one, even if you get the points, the second one, it's a little bit more tricky because you got to put it nine inches away from enemy models because it's a summoned model. You're summoning it, and it's got to be nine inches away from enemy models. And if enemy models are closing on you, and you closing on enemy models, because of course you are, because I ain't got much shooting except from heroes and whatnot. My main bulk of my troops just needs to run and catapult off trees. They ain't shooting nothing. So my second one, there's a, not a lot of room where to put it. Not a lot. But you can put it sometimes useful places. Third one is almost useless. I have not found a place to put it a third one yet that has really benefited me in a game at all. Have not found a place. But what Horticulus gives you is this. Horticulus can, once per game, he can put down a daggum tree. And the only restrictions is it be within three inches of him. And not within one inch of any other model, friend or foe. So he can drop it in the middle, right in front of that gun units that's trying to, to close with you if it's your turn or whatnot. But he, I believe he does it in a hero phase instead. Because normally you drop these at the end of a movement phase. But Horticulus here, he'll let you drop it in a hero phase. And the only restriction is one inch away from all other models and three inches away Within three inches of him, so that's a that's a pretty strong for him because otherwise he ain't two nothing. He's got the, pretty much the same attack profile as him. Mulch has a pretty a little bit better attack profile because he's got a two damage on his attacks, but he ain't nothing hand to hand, not nothing special, and he ain't got any real weird spells and whatnot except some weird retreat thing. He ain't got nothing going for him, but maybe laying that tree for some kind of blocking. Or some kind of something in a game, man. But I'm going to be able to try him out in that 700 point force, and maybe I'll keep everybody informed of that. But let's get back to the Dagum Glotkin. Okay? I'm going to give you another look at him, and we're going to go right back to the to painting the Glotkins because we're ready to get to get on it. All right, I see, I see, Clarence. All right. Let me move the Dagum camera. We got the Nurgle bell. Did y'all hear? I can't reproduce it. All right. Get back down to it. So we done dry brushed. Let me see. Can we see? Is, is that a good angle? A good enough angle? Let me see. I don't want you to be able to see the palette and all, I guess, man. All right. We done dry brush. 
Family scissors too. They showed up somewhere. Then dry brush this day gum blocking all the way up to a bright, bright yellow. But we've only hit, of course, the very tip highlights on it. And you know, you could let it ride like this. You could let old blocking ride and everything be fine. But it ain't that simple. And he'll look a lot better if you'll smooth out some of them brush strokes. And I'm going to show you how to do that. First, I got to do just a touch more dry brushing. If you look over here on my palette, I'm going to go back to that purple that I had. See that purple right there? What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some white to that purple. Because I done forgot. I got ahead of myself. And forgot about that arm. I drizzled me some purple. I forgot about that arm that we had turned blue and purple. So my highlight is going to be a, a lighter purple. And with purple here, I am highlighting with, I am mixing white to get my highlight. Not yellow. With a lot of things now, with red, you want to mix yellow to get the highlight. On up orange into yellow. With uh, green, like I'm using now, you know, a lot of times you want to use yellow to go on up. To highlight, I seen a thing. Gillum and blue that looks like it busted itself open, trying to trying to bust open itself. All right, I got me a light purple. I got to get most of it off. I'm gonna hit this arm here. Well, I get some different glasses on and can see what the dead gun heck I'm doing because I can't see a thing. Here we go. All right, I hit this. Somebody get me some glasses at work. Here we go. You're just hitting the high point. And don't not worry about the inside there. Light ain't hitting it. This is where just where light hits, okay? Now actually I should have highlighted with that pink. Because I really do need me some pink now again. I throwed away my pink. I'm gonna grab a little pink. Honking the horn outside my house. Get a shot. Somebody take it. Get a shot at. Here we go. I got a purplish pink now. And I'm going to rake just over the top. Now, this is going to actually be off, not in detail, but you got to watch out. I got some of that pink on my finger, and I grabbed it, and luckily it was on a horn and not on one of these fat rolls. But I had to go back over it with my greens. Luckily, it was just on that horn that's going to get painted. You got, I got to watch that. Grabbing things. If I'm working with a lot of colors, I'm working real fast too. Gotta watch that. All right, now I'm gonna add a little white to that same color that I had. A lot of white. Bring over a little more. That's an ugly pink. Right, I'm going to go right over the top. There we go. That's nice. It's bringing it out. Bring it back over that purple. And I just hit the bare highlights of that purple. It's going to get washed down. But I, that's why I need to bring it up high. Bring it up too high and then you wash it back down. I might add a little bit more of this greenish, this greenish yellow. To this to give it a weird look. I don't know if that's gonna work. That's not gonna work. That's going to a flesh tone. I need to add straight white to that purple. There we go. There we go. 
That's what I was looking for. Very, very, very light pink. Okay, now, once again, down strokes. Starting at that tip, coming back down, hitting only the very, very tips of that, that purple. Now, that's going to be it for the dry brush. I said that before, didn't I? Now, the thing I got to do is mix up a diluted wash to hit this thing with because I don't want to do it with a full string. So, let me run in there and grab a, cut, a small cap or whatnot that I can mix up um, my wash in because what I'm going to wash it down with is... Hmm. Hmm. I got two choices. I got Athenian Camo Shade and I got Biotan Green. This Biotan Green is strong. I think it goes against this though. I think I'm going to go with a 50% or less Athenian Camo Shade. Probably a little less than 50%. So let me go get me a cap, and I'll be right back. Y'all can listen to this here um, baseball game right now until I get back. It's the Daggum Cubs. No, now it's the Daggum Texas and Houston. Houston win. The champs. Houston. Houston, the champs. Asteroid. I, I never thought I'd say that. I'll be right back, folks. With injuries and was out of baseball for a while. Had shoulder problem, played independent baseball, and a kicker as well. He's from this area. He's from Arlington and played for an independent team in Grand Prairie. For the team now that beats some help in that bullpen, I really like what Jeff Bannis is doing here. I mean, it's a a low pressure situation. You're down. You got eight and nine coming up to begin with. Do what you can as a manager to get him off to a good start. It's a good start. One up, one down. Fans watch every out of market regular season game live home mm -hmm. in the office or on the go with MLB.tv. Your subscription includes MLB at bat premium, allowing you to watch live baseball from your favorite supporting devices. Visit MLB.tv for details. You know, Fantastic. Last year, I was going to say that. I, I, you, know, you get kind of used to that. Right. You were, I missed it. I'm really good on that tweet, too. That's the reason that I've done the last couple of years. Just, Once you start on that, you know that. You know. You know. You know. <laughs> That's what I talk about back in the office. What's, what, what's, 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 what do you know? What do you know? The MLB.TV read, though, I like. It sounds all right. All righty, folks, I'm back. Now, I found me a cap like I was talking about I needed. But I'm thinking it's too small. And another thing that came to my head was that my lime and medium, which is what I was really wanting to mix it with, I guess, and all, is almost out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the cap on this lime and medium. I'm going to put in some of this here, and I'm going to try to go about 50-50 with this camo shade. Maybe a little less. There we go. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to mix it around. Hang on, I got tag them. People tag them calling me constantly. Right, here we go. Now what I need is a little piece of paper towel to 
test it out on. And I need to close this camo shade before I spill it on live TV. Hmm, that looks pretty good. In fact, it might be a little strong. Hmm. Hmm, might be a hair strong. Ain't got no more. Gonna have to pour hair water in there. Ain't gonna hurt nothing. Don't hurt nothing at all. That's more like it. Bag gummy. Alright. Brush, brush, brush. I ain't got a flipping brush. Good gracious. I'm gonna have to use this brush. It's bigger than I was dry brushing with, actually. Now, when I'm putting this on, what I kind of want to avoid is getting it on the purple part of the arm. Because I'm gonna wash that with a diff different color. In fact, in fact, I think I'm gonna wash it with a different color right now. So First of all, I'm going to take some purple, and that's what I'm going to use my little cap for. I knew there was something. This is clear water. Even if it ain't, I don't give a rip. I do. I do. But look. I'm going to get some in that, in that cap. I'm going to take a, just a drop of this purple. I'm going to use this big old brush to get some out. I use the edge of the cap to rake it off so I'm not even actually going into the water. <sighs> Waste. Look at that. And so look, I got about a mm, five good, four or five dollops in there, which don't even put me at 50%. I mean, it just tints it, tints it purple. If you can see on there, it's not. Not terrible dark. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start up on the pink and bring it all the way back. And this is taking away the brush strokes already. I've seen it. And I'm actually going to put it up on the blue. All the way to the edge of the blue. And wash and wash and wash. Now, if you know, have seen any of the other videos I've been doing about washing that daggum Nurgle tree, that feculent Naramal. If you don't see any videos now the wash, you need to get on all sides. It ain't just a light thing. It's a it's a egg on everywhere. So you see my other videos you've seen about wicking off with the brush. And it's a big thing. Because you, you get too much on spots and it accumulates in spots that shouldn't accumulate too much. And it accumulates down there the base too when it comes off. This one's coming off the horn. The only excess I had was coming off that horn at the bottom there. And, but I'm wicking off by taking this, grabbing it up, with it seeps onto the brush, and then going down to the paper towel and taking it off on the onto the onto the paper towel, then back up. So I'm good with my purple for right now. I might need another one once it dries to see how strong it dries. And then you clean up my mess. Now over to my green. I'm going to use that bigger brush and I'm going to turn him sideways with this part up with the purple up where I'm not going to be dripping down onto my purple. I am going to go with my green. I'm going to start up top. Evenly distributed. And once it gets wet one time, because I didn't let it dry overnight and let this yellow dry just forever and all. Man, once you wet it one time, this lime and medium with this stuff, it's thick, it's sticky, just like paint. And so, once you you don't you don't want to be dragging on it. You do not want to be dragging on it at all. On the second go around is what I'm talking about. Once once it gets wet, you only got just a few seconds to fool with it. Because after that, it is a uh, it will come off on your brush because you've weakened it up and it's because it's so sticky and it will stick and then stick to your brush and it'll pull the paint that's from underneath and run it run the whole thing man and believe me i'm speaking from 
experience completely from experience now i'm working quickly to get this green wash on here and i'm working from top down to the bottom in spots i'm making sure i get all around even on the underneath side of the arm and even in the places where i didn't get highlights this ain't no highlight this is a daggum shade that that brings that highlight down a little bit and smooths out them daggum bre breast strokes them brush strokes smooths them down of the daggum dry brushing you need this step after the dry brushing to tie it all together like dude says tied the room together all right here we go now watch, I'm not going back over any spots that I that I had or that I've just done. You get one daggum shot at it. Once it gets wet, it's wet. Don't go picking. You only want to pick at the dry spots. You find a dry spot, go hit it. Yes. Wet spot, you can add some to it, but you got to be careful and dab, dab, dab down on top like that. Now, I'm looking to wick some off of his feet. I'm not worried about the toenails. I ain't worried about the horns. Not touching the horns yet. Need to get the side of his face is dry. I seen a big dry space right there. Phone side he never got that spot at all. Like I said, once it's wet, you don't want to fool with it too much more because I haven't let it dry. If you let it dry overnight, you don't have to be as cautious as I was being just right then. Now I'm wicking off right now from the bottom of his feet. Wicking off in a couple of places up in the cracks. Wicking off. Looking to get his muscle up in there that I missed, but being careful and taking it back off of that blue before it contaminates the blue. Now be careful, do not take off. All right. His underarm's still dry. So I see that and I hit it. Make sure, let it run down, wick off. Wick off only from when it's excess into the recesses too much. One spot I didn't get was that under the belly, the belly, and the inside of that leg is still dry. When these big models, you think you're done, you ain't done. You gotta go all the way around and look at it from all angles and up underneath and whatnot. Ooh, and that was a bad spot right there that I caught on the arm. Because if it puddles or dries in a, spl a splotchy way, it's because you didn't wick it off enough. But you're not wicking off of flat spots. Now, I don't know how y'all can see, but it brought down that it brought down that highlight yellow and that yellow considerably, but it still left it in, in strategic places. So once I go putting this, this uh, detail on it, it's going to look good. All right, sadly, we got to sit him to the side just for a few minutes. Is that wash will dry up pretty quickly in this dry humidity around here. Now, since I got that green uh, toned down wash, I still have some left in that lime and medium. So I'm going to keep that. Put it up on top of my, in my wash uh, section. I got all my washes up on top. And I, I keep nerdlings all over. I keep... I keep my bases, base coat paints pretty much down on the bottom here. I keep layer paints up on that second row. And I keep higher layer paints up in here, like my Storm Host Silver and that high copper. You know, that Screaming Skull, which is almost a white, but it ain't. It's a greenish type of white. And I keep all my green. My greens is all over in this corner. Y'all can't see behind the glock goes from greens to blues to reddish to pinks you know oranges up in there flesh tones up in the middle into the browns into all um, into the metallics and only have a few metallics excuse me i have my base coat metallics i have basically three base coat metallics lead belcher retributor armor is my gold that lead belcher is my silver of course and Balthazar gold, even though it's gold, it's my bronze 
and brass base for my pieces. Then I put my second layer of acrylics. I keep Iron Breaker, which is a medium tone silver. And I have a bunch of other toned silvers. If you watch my uh, video where I'm doing them daggum rock flies, wings, I have several other silvers that I use in colors. I have this Auric Armor Gold. Don't come down my street. Do not come down my street. Uh, I got this Auric Armor Gold. Needs to be shook up. Ain't been shook up in a coon's age. So I got Auric Armor Gold. And that's almost like that Notre Dame helmet gold. That pot of gold. You don't see this too much in Sigmar and stuff because everything seems, you know, it's toned down. That's what people want. I rarely even use this, actually. I use it on some models. It's real flashy. I get this one here, Liberator Gold. Now, what Liberator Gold is, Liberator Gold is a highlight for on top of Retributor Armor Gold that gives it an antique look. And it's got a reddish, it's got a reddish tint to it up in the gold. It's almost a rose gold reddish thing. And it's a real good one. It's a real good one to dry brush over the top of Retributor armor. Then up on top shelf right here, top shelf of my paints, I keep Stormhost silver, which is GW's highest silver. Stormhost silver. And I use that for the edge highlights, of course, on silver and metallic that's metal colored. Then on, right next to it, I got hashtag copper. Hash nut. Hash hood. Hash hood. Hash hood. Copper. It's my highlight from my copper on like bells and whatnot. Uh, and I've been painting a lot of bells. That's why it come to mind on me from this Nurgle. Over here, I got a gloss finish. And it's my only Vallejo paint. Not because I dislike Vallejo, but I'm just kind of a GW. You know, that's what I use. I like GW. There ain't never been no reason for me to change off of GW if I like it. But I do like this gloss varnish that I use on, on tons and wet, blowed out guts on top of Nurgle's rock. Because once you spray down a model with a dull coat, it kills out all that stuff that I'm talking about that might have already been glossy. Nurgle's Rot in particular. Blood for the Blood God. If you put Blood for the Blood God on and then you spray down on top of that with daggum um, dull coat, tester's dull coat, which is the decoding for, for these models, um, then it will dull it down and you need to come back over it with something. And I guess they call it hard coat for GW. Don't know why I've never used hard coat, but I'm using this Vallejo. Use blood for the blood guy up here on top. These are my specialty paints. This is that night nikolide oxide. This is that stuff that gives you that daggum bluish turquoise oxidation on the side of the daggum brass and bells and things and whatnot like that. Got over here, Typhus Corrosion. I'm running low on this, too. I need to get me some more of this. This is the stuff. Especially had to use it on weapons like this. You see right here? We're going to use it right now, just right now, on a, this, this fella's site. It's been primed, and then it's been painted in lead belcher. So I'm going to break out non oil, and I'm going to break out the corrosion at the same time. And I'm going to paint them both on there at the same time so get my bigger brush now paint on first of all that non oil and I get the whole thing wet and covered completely and nice with the non oil, just like I would normally cover over top of a silver color. Don't forget the top. 
that's what I love about miniatures. You gotta just paint all the angles all the way around. Like I love them. Anyway, once you got it wet with that, then you go over here to the typhus corrosion. And now typhus corrosion has little bitty pieces of grit in it. You don't paint it all over, you just just dab in spots. Right? You don't paint it all over at all. You're dabbing in spots. And you let that you let that um, non oil spread it out a little bit for you, so it's not so hard, and you can kind of see through it, and it's not so opaque. You know, I need a little bit down on that shaft part, I need a little bit of corrosion. And now what that does too is this: when you come back and highlight it now with storm host silver or any of these other ones, silver and stuff like that, you do this over gold. You do this over brass and, and bells and stuff like this for corrosion. Now, when you come back over and highlight it, when you drag across it, it's going to catch them little grains of sand and little pebbly grit that was in that type of corrosion there. And it's going to catch that and highlight it and make it look real cool when you when you're it looks like part of the metal. It looks like the metal is corroding. So we took care of his... Uh, his thing just like that. We could have done his little thing. We should have done his little thing while we was at it. Let's go ahead and do it real quick. Cause I still got a little bit of time. Dry. He's getting there. And he might be close enough soon after I finish up him real quick. And run my dad gum gums a little more. He might be ready. Um, to start doing some other kind of detail works. Especially if I get some some of this drippage and whatnot off of here with a paper towel. And I'm wicking off a little bit of this over drip that dripped down onto the base there. From this. I'm fairly happy with the way it come out though. Alright, once again, this one's gonna be real small. I take some non oil. And I'm going over his little weapon, both sides, and I wet it down. Then I take the type of corrosion and then just touch it, not all over, just in spots. And then non oil will spread it down and fade it in, but it'll still keep its little gritties. And when you have, when you dry brush back over the top of them little gritties, you're gonna catch them and show a good corrosion look you know and you can add that you know the the now the annihilation the this stuff this stuff's added later a little bit on the next step if you wanted that if you let this dry first or you can do it at the same time sometimes i do in fact almost all the time i do add this in on top of a wet non-oil i add it on top of bells and stuff, I'm, I don't know what I'm telling y'all, but I, I do right add it right on top of uh, the wet non oil. And this needs to hurry on up. While it's getting ready, I'm going to redo my wet palette. And by redoing my wet palette, is this <clears throat> I got to throw away all this gunk. Man, I'm not trying to hear nobody. Why are people calling me? Why is it even going off? And I got my daggum volume down. Now, <clears throat> I got it wet fairly still, but I need the dang humidity or the lack of it in here has dried it out some. So I'm going to wet it again with the water bottle, swish it around. I'm going to dump out a stream. See how the stream's coming out? Now it starts dripping. When it starts dripping, I start flipping and I flip it over. Until it comes out that bottom part of that other. See that it start to come out. Once it starts to drip, I lay it back flat. Because I want dripping on both edges. Man, where is my paper towel? Yeah, I think I'm going to have to use that purple once again. Once that purple dried, it really wasn't all that strong. So I'm going to go back over to my little purple mix that I had in that cap. 
And while he's still wet with that other green, it's still drying, and my purple was mainly dry, I'm going to go back over again with that purple. Except this time I'm not going to go all the way up to that tip. I'm not going all the way up to the tip there. All right. All right. Try to get them people quit calling me. All right, here we go. I need to look at this thing again, wick off any big drippings that you get gravity has brought down off of that green wash that I got on it. I'm fairly good with it. Back to my wet palette. I need to get me a paper towel and another slab of this parchment paper. I'm going to peel off some. This stuff is a nightmare. Anyway. Peeling off me a slab. Cut me a rectangle off there and then I'm going to put that down right on top of there. Work it in. Rub it down until it absorbs enough water from the paper towels to equalize and lay down flat. You got to pet it like a pussy cat until it lays down and goes to sleep. Ain't that right, Jack? All right. Now, one thing I can do right at this point right now is paint in some of the tentacles and this mouth maw. Now, what I'm going to do with the mouth maw is I get this color called pink horror, which is a little bit darker lipstick type pink. And that's what color I want as the base color for the inside of that maw. So I'm going to put some of that out. Because if you remember, I didn't, I didn't wash up in there because I didn't highlight in there and I didn't, you know, I didn't dry brush up inside there. So it's been, it's relatively dry. I didn't over wash and, and all that up in there. So put out a little bit of drops, probably a little bit too much. But Just let me a paintbrush. For this one, I'm using like a medium layer brush. It's a Citadel medium layer brush. Don't know what number is a size two. I imagine it would be a size to a one, maybe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the inside of that mall right up in there. I'm going to paint all up inside of there. Of course, you got thin paints, man. Like old Duncan said, thin your paint down a little bit. And all the uh, all the wet palette's doing, it's not thinning my paint for me. It keeps a little thinner than usual if you just laid it out on that. But it, it ain't going to thin your paint for you. What it's going to do is keep your paint from drying out. It'll maintain its moisture. As the paint dry, starts to dry out, it... You know something, I don't got to go too far outside of these teeth because there's a bunch of teeth here. I need to stay on the inside. I thought I had to go into the outside. But I'm just using this pink right along the inside. It doesn't matter if I get some on the teeth because I'm going to paint the teeth after. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint that tongue out the same pink color. Now it's probably going to take two coats. 
two thin coats on his tongue and all because I'm over a base of this green and you're using this pink over top of green as well as you know I thin the paint down a little bit to get a raw in order to get really around all them teeth and stuff to get all around the teeth on the gums there I had to thin down a lot so it's probably gonna take two coats on that now while I got it out and got this color out I'm gonna look for any other big tentacles that might be dry then I'm gonna hit with the same pink and I seen one right over here but what I'm gonna need for it is I'm gonna need a darker version of this pink in order to fade in some of these tentacles that's going up into his body I see a big wallop I, I need I see a couple of them I need to take out I need to wick out a couple of stuff He's taking a long time to dry some of these places. Need wicking. But he's very close to being dry all over from that wash that I give him. That's another thing about washing them with lime and medium versus uh, water. Even though I had just a tiny bit of water, you know, but it was mostly lime and medium and it dries pretty dang fast. Because it's, it's like a paint. All right. What was the end to? I need a darker version. I need a little bit darker version of that pink. So what I'm going to do is add a little blue. That base Calador Sky. Get a little bit of that. I don't need a lot. So I just put out a little dollar. I wash out the brush. I don't know why I done that. But I start. I give me a mix. I need to add some of that pink. I need to keep a good bit. I need to keep some of that pink because I'm fixing to, you know, use it again. But I need to tone down the purple and give me a mix. So I'm gonna be swirling right here the two colors together and making a few other colors. Add them two. I done made two distinct colors now. Let's see if I can make three. I wash out. I don't know if I can make three. Get that pink to go up on top of that. Pink to go up on top of that purple. I've got three, I got four now. So I got for me four colors out of them two that I can use to make tentacles. And so what I'll do is I'll use the darkest one, the blue, up closer to the body and work it around. And if I can paint a couple of tentacles at once, I'll do that. He's got a couple of figures down on his belly. Then I'll work that second color in right below it. This, these almost mirror, in fact, I'm going to run the pink up higher. These mirror his arm a little bit, or that, this thing coming out. It's a, his tentacle arm. They're going to be the same type of, sh of shades to, the, to, to a pink, to a straight pink. I'm working a straight pink and I'm working all four colors in their line like that. Then we'll turn them around, work up underneath. I need that straight pink. I'll work that second color right on top of that. The third color is going to that purple. And the fourth color is that blue. We're going to blue up top. Now wash out the brush a little bit. Get the brush dry. Now wet the brush down a little bit. Leave it a little wet. And I come up here and I drag the blue onto the green. The top of the blue I drag. And it fades out the, the green but fades the blue in. There we go. It's nice. It's nice. All right. 
That's two tentacles done that I did. I don't know if you can see. God dang this thing. There's two tentacles up under his belly I just did. And they are purple and they fade to a pink. Now, I can't leave that light on me. It didn't bother me. I don't know. I'm like, that's, I'm gonna, maybe you can see that a little better. Now I want to do the same thing over here to this tentacle. We'll give it a straight pink. That looks like a horn to me. I'm going to call that a horn. That's a horn. So I'm gonna just work this little tentacle real quick. Heck, that might be a horn too. I think I'm calling that a horn. So let me get that off of there. I'll have to repaint that. It's so it's fine. I didn't get far enough into it. All right, what else is going to be paint? Let's find some more daggone tentacles. That wear some of them hanging off his neck. And we'll start from the bottom now. Working them pink. Can't area any wicked. Wicked, 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 wicked. Starting with that pink. On the very tips of them tentacles. Hitting with pink. Then I'm switching to the second color for the next quarter of the tentacle. Then I'm switching to the purple. For the next, hey. hey so please, then took over my dang dogs in my house. Lord, got to get these dogs outside. Now I switch it over to the blue for the tops of them tentacles. The very tops. And I don't go all the way up to the line. I don't go all the way up to my green yet. What I do is then I wet my brush. Then I fade those pinks in together. I pull that purple down. I had too much pink. Then I take a wet brush, still kind of wet, and I always dry it off. And I take that blue and I drag it onto my green. That wet blue. Well, it's still wet and I got a wet brush. I'll take that blue and drag it onto my green. So then I got to fade onto my green. I lost a little bit too much, so I got to add some blue. And I lost, I, I pulled too much with a, too wet of a brush. So I come back with that half wet brush. I pull the blue down onto the purple and up. Because I had to add the blue, I had to pull it down and up. Okay, I'm done with those tentacles on the front. Turn him around and running and running around. He's got a big one right on his back, right on his back of his shoulder, right? See that thingy? Right there, we're going to hit that one. So we start, we need to wait that a little. We start with the pink on the tip. We go about a quarter of the way down. We got to paint, paint the pink. We go back to that. That second mix right there. Go for another quarter of the way up. Then we go to the purple. All right. And now we go to the straight uh, blue. Straight blue. Put it up top. Maybe need to add some more blue here soon because I'm running out. I don't know how many, all these same tentacles. I don't know. I was going to make them all blue like that. All right, now I'm ready to blend it. I take the brush, I'm blending that, that purple into that pink like that. And whichever one's the dominant, I take the other one and go towards it. Like if I had more purple than. Pink, I'd rake the pink up onto it, or vice versa. Whichever has the most, I take the other one up onto it to even more even out the, the blend. Wet the brush again. I'm taking that blue and dragging it up onto my green, onto my bare green. If I get too much, which I did, I add more blue to the top and redrag.
I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to put down some more blue, y'all. It just didn't take right there. All right, that's good. All right, go ahead. We got another big tentacle holding down here and a couple back here. So I need to reload my guns. Okay, got a bob of blue. Put down a little bit more pink. Mix the blends back up together. Some more that purple. Now I got a few tentacles on his back I can go with. You get a wet brush. Oops, wrong end. Wrong end. Start with the pink end. And give it about a quarter of just straight pink. I got a mess up. On that one I had to hit with water. It's been it's been sitting long enough that I was able to hit with water and catch that mess up where I went over with the paint onto his leg. Is what I'm talking about. But I caught it with a water brush. All right, I check catch catch those tentacles. He don't have as many tentacles as I thought. Um, that great and clean one it just didn't stop on him. Let me get that tentacle there on his back. We need to switch to a smaller brush on that one. I am scanning for tentacles. I don't see them. Maybe this is it. All right, with that straight pink, I'm going to go back and hit his tongue again while I'm on the straight pink because it's dry where it had. I had to use two coats on his tongue to get it to that color. So the tongue is done. I'm going to put the second color, which is that light pinky purple, up on about the next third, uh, next quarter of this. Then I'm going to go with that dark purple that has more blue in it, up on top of that. Then I'm going to go with that straight blue up on top of that. I'm going to wet it. I'm going to add some more pink. Yeah, dog, just wait a minute. Had to add a little more pink. I forgot to do this other side, too. Let's go ahead and do it at the same time. I need to add that pinky purple. To that one and that one. Then I add that dark purple around. Darker purple on both of them. Now I go to the straight blue. That straight blue around. It doesn't matter if you have a line because you fit in the blend. All right. Take the wet brush. I'm pulling the pink up on top of the purple because I have more purple than pink. Ah, oh, crash. Did he stick his arm in that? Did you stick your arm in that when I dropped you? No. Luckily, it wasn't a daggum disaster. All right. Let's get back to it. Almost a disaster, folks. Y'all almost got to witness. 
guys. All right. Back to the blend before this blue dries. Take that blue up onto the green to blend that up. Now I'll take the blue down onto the purple. Same over here. Take the blue down on the purple. I need more water. Take the blue up onto the green. I can't do it, so I need to add a little more blue. I let it dry too long. Running my flapper. Now I drag it up on the green. That wet part. I drag that wet blue down on the purple. I drag that purple down onto that pink because I have too much pink. Over here. Don't take too much blending over there because it's so small. So now I have blended up from pink to there. Now I come back and I dilute my pink down pretty thin. And I just go just on the tips. Starting with them ones that i done earlier. Just on the tips hit it with pink. Because a lot of that pink got washed out. Get it all straight on the end with pink. A lot of that pink got washed out on the blending. All right, you need to come from all sides and hit it with that straight pink. On the ends. Now, one more thing. Need to add that Emperor's Children pink on the side there. It's a lot brighter pink. And it's going to be my highlight pink. So what I'm going to do, I'm taking water down considerable. Touch the end of that tongue with it. I'm going to touch the ends of these dang tentacles with it over top of that same pink. And I'm going to have to go back and blend everything together. i got to, I got to work quicker to put that pink on its end. Now, I'm going to come back and blend it. Got to have that wet brush. I blend down on top of it. If I got it gone too far in spots. And if I didn't get it enough, I pull it up. Whichever way. If I didn't get enough, I pull up. And if I got too much, I pull down. Okay, now I got it blended in. I got all those tips run up to a to a bright pink. All those tips. Alrighty, now I'm going to take a break and call that uh, section one or part one of a painting the glocking. And I'm going to come back maybe tomorrow. Maybe later tonight. Who knows? But I'm going to come back later on. And I maybe even have a little bit done off the camera. Who knows what I'm going to do right now? I got to go feed them chickens, I know, for one, and deal with these dogs. I know that's for two. But. When we come back, of course, then it's going to be time to get into painting the boils, painting the straps, painting the butt loincloth, painting the horns, which we're going to do with the drip method with washes to get an effect like this right here that I got on a Morbidex. If you can check out his horns, a pretty daggum nice. How they fade to that white to the brown. Uh, Morbidex's horns, you see that? I'm gonna do the same thing and that that's a drip method where you hang it upside hang it upside down and all. But I'm gonna call this part one. I appreciate everybody coming by and giving it a listen. And good luck on y'all's painting. And I'll be back with this shortly. And uh, once again, like I said, subscribe to my channel. And uh, thank y'all for coming.